Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're looking at offensive and defensive missile posturing. So when we shoot a missile, assuming modern combat, modern missile combat, if we shoot a missile at a hostile, and we're talking fighter on fighter in all of these cases, then there are two reasons we're doing it, either to kill them or to posture them. And you may think the most common reason to fire a missile is to kill a hostile. Well, in reality, we see that the vast majority of missiles fired by pilots, by air quotes, guys that know what they're doing, guys that, you know, uh, say tail matches, stuff like this, who train hard in this kind of thing. The majority of missiles they shoot is not to kill a bad guy, it's to posture them, it's to control them for tactical uses. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about, give an overview of what this is and why we would use it. We're going to have a look at some examples in defensive and offensive posture shooting. And then we have to do our usual calculations. We've got some graphs around here. And then we'll go and have a look at a couple of real world examples. Okay, so first of all, overview. What is offensive or defensive missile, missile posture shooting? It's the method of temp or rally tactically disabling a hostile. Sorry for the bad spelling. I had to knock this together very quickly and the way we do that is very simple we are going to fire a radar guided missile at a hostile we're going to have a full stt single target track lock on the hostile and when we fire our missile we can be sure in that in that case whether it's a fox one or a fox three type missile that the hostile will get an audio and visual warning on their rwr radar warning system and the usual outcome of that is that the hostile will at that point go defensive now like just about everything when we're talking about these fights they can be very complex they have many factors it depends on pilot skill other players in the area all sorts of things so we're going to have to use generalities a bit here but the rough idea is we fire a missile at a hostile they know about it then they turn cold and then that allows us to control the fight for various reasons so when would we want to do offensive posture missile shooting so when we say offensive, that means we are trying to attack these targets rather than defend a target or defend an area. So an example is we could have a 1v1, and this is always fighter aircraft, fighter aircraft versus fighter aircraft. That's the only time we're realistically wanting to do this. Uh, technically, you could use it on bombers in certain cases, but generally it's going to be against fighter aircraft. So a 1v1, and it, this will be aircraft dependent. So let's say that the hostile is an F-15 and it has AMRAMs, FOX-3 type missiles, and we are an SU-27 with no fox 3s we've only got fox 1s equipped well in that case he has the upper hand he's got the better missiles the fox 3s so if we do a square up straight on missile fight the chances are that he's going to win assuming equal pilot skill etc so we may have to in that case upset his game plan by doing uh, offensive posture shooting we may have to fire at him at long range to upset him force him defensive and ensure that he can't do exactly what he wants to do Another example is if we are a single person and the hostile are two or more, then we may need to do offensive posturing there. We may need to fire at one of this pair of aircraft to send him cold, to put him out of the fight temporarily at long range, so that temporarily we have only one aggressing fighter, which we can take on in 1v1. And then once we've killed that guy, then the other guy we can go in and kill. And again, that's probably aircraft dependent as well. And assuming you don't have multiple fire track was scan uh, options in your aircraft. Another example is when you have two or more on the blue side and two or more on the red side. It can get a bit more complicated in this case. But again, for tactical reasons, if you want to basically reduce the amount of hostiles you are fighting against temporarily, then you can offensively posture some of those red aircraft out of the fight. And we'll look at that a bit later. Now to defensive posturing. So examples would be if we were protecting an area, let's say protecting an area where there were friendly, I don't know, AWACSs or, or tankers or something like that, geographical area, then we would fire at a hostile. Uh, if we didn't have the opportunity of doing a kill shot, we could fire at a hostile to send him defensive before we even got to that area. Or again, protecting a certain aircraft if there were hostiles after um, uh, an AWACS, for instance, and we couldn't get to them in time to actually do a kill shot, we could posture shoot just to send them defensive before they actually got to the AWACS or the, the target that we're defending. So we're going to look at some examples now. So we start over here on the 1v1. Very simple. All we need to know in terms of calculation is that we're going to fire a posturing shot outside of our let. Our let is our lethal or our no escape, range no escape. So if we were to fire a shot to kill an opponent, we would fire within, at or within the R lethal calculated range. And the reason it's calculated is because it varies depending on our speed, our height, 
R aspect, hosp hostile speed, hostile height, hostile, hostile aspect. And so it's a variable in this case. And if we were doing posture shooting, we would fire outside our let. How far outside our let is up to us. And in terms of how far in terms of maximum range, well, there isn't really any range. I guess you could fire at about 100 miles if you want. I, I'm aware that the missile obviously wouldn't hit the target in that case, unless it was an AIM-54. But you would still have the effect of the hostile thinking that he was being shot at. There would be a warning on his WR and it would still have effect. So next we need to calculate our variable R lethal in our particular fight. And we've been through this several times with several different videos, missile evasion videos, cranking uh, kill shot videos. And it's just the same graphs as before. Very, very roughly, what we've got here is assuming hot aspect of the target, side aspect of the target, cold aspect of the target. We've got our R lethal here in terms of nautical miles from the target. And we've got our average altitude between the two targets. So for instance, if one target was at 30,000 feet, uh, feet and one target was at 10,000 feet, then the average would be 20,000 feet. And in that case, assuming for instance, a cold aspect, at 20,000 feet, we would draw a line up here, come along here, we would get whatever that is, six miles, six and a half miles. And that's how you calculate your R lethal in a particular fight. As we've said before, all of these graphs are assuming V optimal as the speed, so Mach 1 as R speed and the target speed. So you will need to do a percentage adjustment um, to calculate for speed if you're going faster or slower. The type of missiles, as usual, we've got our standard Fox 1s here. Uh, which are all going to be relevant. The A120 Fox 3 will work fine, assuming an STT lock. An R77, I believe, works fine, as long as an STT lock. And the AIM-54, I haven't actually tried it yet, but I think it works fine, assuming an STT lock. And here are the R lethal modification adjusters um, based on the default as an AIM-120 here. So, for instance, if we calculated a number here as 8, and but we actually had the AIM-7, then we would minus one mile here if we were on the deck or minus two miles here if we were up at max altitude angels 25 or interpolate in between so that was just a very quick description of this like i said if you want more more information on that we've got the uh, cranking kill shot video or the missile evasion videos where it goes into more detail about that so next to quickly reiterate these examples we've got here so if we've got our basic one-on-one -on -one, then obviously for reasons that we described earlier, if we didn't want to go head on with this guy down to um, the kill range of our missiles, because maybe he's got better missiles or whatever, then we could shoot at our lethal plus whatever. So in this case, let's say our lethal is 10, we're going to fire at 20 miles instead of 10. And that is going to hopefully send the hostile cold. Now, whether it actually sends the hostile cold is going to depend on several things. Is this controlled by a human? Is it controlled by an AI? Is it controlled by uh, a good human? Or is it controlled by a human that's not very good? All those things will depend. And as well as that, the situational awareness will depend on whether this guy dodges or not. So for instance, this guy can, is attacking us. He clearly knows how close we are. He clearly knows when we've shot the missile. So he can make a good assumption that that missile has come from us and he knows the range. So he can make a good informed decision whether he's going to dodge that missile or not. But if the AO was much more complex or maybe he wasn't targeting us, maybe he didn't know our range, then there would be a different chance that he would dodge. But again, speaking in generalities here, we're going to fire the posture shot at 20 miles and he's going to dodge and turn away. Now, once he's dodged and he's turned away, left, right, cold or up, down, whatever, then that puts him off his game plan. It means we can egress and we have the initiative from then on. And that's how this guy could win a typical fight if this guy was better armed. This example where we've got just us versus two bad guys. Well, if we took this fight to um, our, our lethal range, which is where we would start doing our kill shots, let's just say 10 miles, Angels 20 head on, then we'd have a very little chance of winning this. And assuming we, let's assume we didn't have track while scan and the ability to fire multiple missiles, then what we could do is uh, say target this guy. Uh, the blue line is going to be the posture shot. The red line is going to be the kill shot. So we could target this guy at 20 miles here. We could fire a AMRAM in an, with an SDT lock and keep targeting him until he's turning cold. And then we could um, disengage and take this guy on, take it down to lethal range, kill this guy. Then when this guy's recovering, then we can go back and kill that guy. Another example, 2v2. We'll look at this one later on in more detail. Uh, so we've got two blues versus two reds. Let's assume everything's equal. Then that is a 50-50% outcome. And we want to try and stack it in our favor. So what we're going to do in this case is this blue here is going to take this guy here out of the fight with a long range posture shot at 20 miles is going to fire that 
force this guy to turn away so he's out of the fight for what 10 20 seconds that's enough for us to do our job but we're going to leave this guy alone and this blue guy here is going to move in close to our lethal range of this guy and we're going to ensure the kill by doing our kill techniques that we looked at in uh, cranking cranking kill shots video and because we've got rid of this guy here and it effectively becomes a one-on-one -on -one in that case then we have the space to be able to make a move like that whereas if there were two active hostiles we possibly wouldn't be able to do something like a cranking shot it really depends but it's again a generality then once this blue here killed this guy then this guy was just recovering from his initial defensive moves then we, well we've got two on one at that point so it'll be stacked in our favor at that point so first of all we'll go and look at a 2v2 um, and then we'll go and look at uh, a defensive area or maybe a defensive aircraft. Okay, this example is a two on two. So on the blues, we've got Cap and Graham. The reds, we've got Johnson and Chaser. So our tactic here, Graham is going to shoot a Johnson from a long distance, 20 plus miles with an SCT and a Fox 3 from his F-15. Now, the result of that is that Johnston is going to turn defensive. Uh, however, the, he does it, it's up to him, but it puts him out of the fight for a good 10 seconds at least. And that means Cap can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chaser here. And because Cap has watched his video about uh, cranking kill shots, it means that I'm probably going to be able to kill this guy. Then once this guy is down, if all goes to plan, well, we'll be a two against one then because Johnson will be recovering and it'll be both of us against him. Then Johnson doesn't have much chance. So let's set that going. Now this is obviously some scripted play we've got here. Um, but generally it's pretty accurate the only time it wouldn't be accurate generally speaking is if it was against a trained team you couldn't do this against the 104th phoenix or something like that but on generally speaking in a public server or something like that when these guys weren't a trained team and this is a viable method uh right anyway so graham is uh well it's about equal so 28 miles so let's just speed it forward a little bit okay Graham has got this guy in a single track. He's fired his missile. Johnson has lost situational awareness. He doesn't know how close this guy is, for whatever reason. And so he's doing the only thing, the right thing, which is to turn away. Looks like he's going to try and beam that missile. And it's put him out of the fight. Uh, this means that it's now a one-on-one. -on -one, and it means that I've got space and confidence to do a, a crank because I don't have to worry about my situational awareness as much. All I've got to worry about is the guy I've got locked in my STT. And I'm going to crank out to 10 miles. This guy is just a generic, what I could, you know, generic skill guy. He's not going to crank me. So that gives me the uh, advantage. Johnson still hasn't beaten this missile in terms of RWR, so he's still heading away. I'm going to turn in out 10 miles. It looks like Chaser fired at about 15 miles. I've taken my shot 10 miles, which is optimal for co-altitude of Angels 19 or 20 or whatever that is. Fire my missile, and that's going to be, that's within, if you check our charts earlier, within our lethal. So this guy hasn't got much chance of defending that, and I should be able to defend his 15-mile uh, missile. There's me defending that. Chaser is defending, but there's not really much he can do against a lethal shot. That's me out. All I've got to do is recover now, and that's now a two versus one. Um, now, Johnson probably could have turned in there. I think it was a bit unrealistic. He, he defended a bit too much, maybe, there. However, saying that, this missile is still got him in his um, uh, sphere or cone of influence. That is still probably locking him. So, according to that guy there, that missile is probably still active on him. And, well, we don't need to follow that any further. It's, it's two against one at the end of the day, so that was only going to end one way. And, of course, Graham just followed up and polished him off at that point. So now an example of defensive posture shooting. So we've got these two guys here, got past our defences. They're attacking our one and only AWACS, which is very precious. They haven't quite closed within firing distance for our lethal yet, so they're not firing. Uh, it's obviously scripted again, but um, I've done this plenty of times in reality. We're pretending that these guys are at active speed of uh, 700 knots or something, and there's no way we're going to catch these guys up in time to fire. So we're going to posture shoot from whatever that is. 12 miles on a cold pursuit that is way out of our lethal that's about three times our lethal um so we're going to fire and they will invariably go cold at this point because there's absolutely no way unless they've got maybe a data link which is unlikely in this case um for them to have AWACS out here they have no idea how far behind we are so again speaking in generalities here these guys are probably going to disengage at this point you can see they're both diving doing their typical defensive moves here and that's the mission done really um because they have turned away from the AWACS the AWACS can escape we can engage we'll have the initiative at this point anyway um and so we'll go and do that we don't need to see that any further so those are just some examples of how we can use 
posture shooting offensively and defensively. It's quite hard to show it in a kind of um, forced setup like this, but you get the idea. And there's loads of examples where you'd use this in reality. So that's the videos done for kill shots or cranking uh, shots, of, as I've called them. That's uh, the posture shots. Um, the next we'll go on to some more detailed team tactics and I'll report in for a video for that soon.